I have questions, Tom. I've got a lot of questions. Yeah. I have many questions. <laughs> All right. Give me the TikTok on what happened with Shohei Otani uh, at the end of last week. And then that culminated with his Instagram post that he's going to the Dodgers. Yeah, well, I think he wound up at a place we thought maybe since he was in high school, right? The Dodgers thought they were going to sign him out of high school. And when this free agency began, I think we all expected he was going to wind up with the Dodgers. And how it came to be, no one saw this coming in terms of Toronto being really the only other finalist here in the sweepstakes. And especially the the contract. $700 million just was a jaw-dropping number. Of course, it took a couple of days before we figured out, well, it's maybe not exactly $700 million. It's more like $460 million in present-day dollars. But I think, Rich, you have to look at this differently. First of all, we know he's the unicorn, right? So why not have a unicorn contract? And it is. There's nothing like it that never has been in baseball. Completely legal, completely within the the bounds of the collective bargaining agreement. And most importantly, this was Shohei's idea. Shohei sat down with both teams and said, I want to defer most of my money. He actually started out telling his agent, Nez Bolello, can I defer everything? And he looked up and was like, well, you can't play for free. You have to play for at least the minimum. And they settled on $2 million. So now Otani is making less than Austin Barnes, the backup catcher for the Dodgers, and he's the most talented player in the history of baseball, making less than a backup catcher. So, you know, the Dodgers got themselves, and you can say this for a $700 million contract, a true bargain. So much so that now they're going after Yashinobu Yamamoto and Josh Hader because of the money they saved on Otani. It's crazy. It is. All right. So let's take it one at a time here. So why, why did Otani um, not go in the direction of the Northeast? Why didn't the? Because I imagine the Yankees and the Red Sox would have fallen all over themselves to enrich him in the same way the Dodgers did, or the Blue Jays were willing to, or everyone else. Why? Why? Why did Otani not go in that direction? No question, you're right, and I applaud him for not using those teams to drive up the bidding and just be a stalking horse, right? I mean, if you're a free agent, you always want to get those teams involved, if for nothing else, to get the price up. But remember, when he was a free agent, he first signed with the Angels. Uh, he could have waited two more years and made more than $200 million. Instead of coming over at age 23, he signs for $2.3 million with the Angels in a minor league contract. And he said at that time he did not want Yankees, Red Sox, Mets, you name it, the Acela Corridor, ruled him out right away. First of all, this guy wants to play climate-controlled or really good weather. It's important to him because he's a two-way player doesn't want to go through cold weather, humidity, wind conditions, all those things that can disrupt your schedule, preacher of routine. Just didn't want the big city, but most importantly, outdoors, iffy weather. And that was the same case this time around where he just ruled out those teams. They were never in it. I don't, Critch, I don't even think the Giants were in it based on their ballpark, their weather, the fact that they're not really a playoff caliber team right now, and who should say when they will be. So really, it was just Toronto, which has a dome, which he loves, by the way. His numbers are great there. It reminds him a lot of the Sapporo Dome where he played in Japan. And the Dodgers, the Angels really weren't in it. They weren't getting to this kind of a number. So limited field, and this guy maxed out at the greatest contract ever for an athlete. So the Angels, so I guess in in, in retrospect, the Angels should have flipped him a couple summers ago or something like that. I mean, is that a fair 2020 hindsight to have here, Tom? At all, yeah, you can you could definitely make that argument just based on you know the arc of a team and especially the Angels who haven't been in the playoffs in forever to just try, try to get something at back. But I look at it this way, Rich. This guy really is you know our Babe Ruth in this generation, even better. I mean, Babe Ruth didn't play this long as a two way player the way Otani has, and he was a drawing card. It, it's like this priceless gem that you have, and you it's you have something of value, and you just don't trade it up. So you can get, what, a few more players in your minor league system to be better down the road. You know, Artie Moreno, you you can make a lot of arguments about how he runs that team, uh, smartly or not. But he loves having star players there who will draw fans. And those people got to watch Shohei for six years. There's value to that. And listen, this year when they at the trade deadline, they had a winning record, uh, a positive run differential, like two or three games out of it. You can't pull the plug on a season. No, I wasn't talking about it. Point. I wasn't talking about it this year. I'm talking about it last year because I mean, let, let's be straight up here, Tom. I mean, you can't be. Uh, obviously, the number seven is surprising, and <laughs> yeah. as as is the structure. Um, but two summers ago, you got to sit here and think to yourself, 
are we willing to go to five? Are we willing to go to six? Because that's going to be the number if we keep playing this thing out. And 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 I'll tell you, you know, uh, again, you know, Suze, you know, Susie Schuster, you know her because you guys, you know, met years ago when the Angels with uh, with, with Tim Salmon and Erstad. I mean, th- those guys weren't like Trout or Otani, but everybody was filling up that stadium because they were winning. So you put some winning players in there. They're going to they're going to fill the place up, Tom. That's she, she was there. You were there. I was there. That's the that's my point about it with the Angels here. There's no doubt that what you said is true. I mean, putting a winning team in there is going to be more attractive. You you look at their attendance and they still haven't gotten back to the level where they were with winning teams. So that there's no question about that. I I just think with Otani, you're never going to win a trade like that. And more than that, he can come back and haunt you because he is just the unicorn in the game. It's just this priceless asset that someone like Artie Moreno, who loves having name players who bring people to the ballpark, Mm -hmm. was just not going to trade. In fact, teams called, and it was Artie Moreno, the owner, not the general manager, who took him off the trade market that year two years ago. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.